1989, the Iron Curtain fell, paving the way for an enlargement of the European Union towards the east. Years later, in 1995, the Barcelona process paved the way for new relations between the Union and its neighbours to the southern shores of the Mediterranean. A quarter of a century afterwards, in Europe and beyond, new curtains are being raised. Closing borders is back on the agenda. But climate change, natural disasters, diseases and human trafficking know no borders. The good news is that also culture, entrepreneurship and innovation know no borders. In an interconnected world, people's willingness to know about each other does not stop at a line on a map. How can we give more significance to what unites us, rather than to what separates us? In order to address the challenges and opportunities that border areas represent, the European Union supports cross-border cooperation through its neighbourhood policy. Stretching from the Arctic Circle in the north to the southern shores of the Mediterranean, 15 CBC programmes were identified back in 2007. More than 30 countries, sharing thousands of kilometres of land and sea borders, ready to work together for improving the living conditions of their inhabitants. They rolled up their sleeves and, let's face it, it was not always easy, like in all families, but the commitment at national level was high, and suddenly it seemed that local and regional actors were just waiting for a good reason to cooperate. CBC was just the right tool for them. 
In the end, programs managed to attract 7,000 project ideas from over 37,000 organizations. And, like diligent parents, they wisely used their savings to fund almost a thousand initiatives. What are all these projects about? They are about Kaya, a young psychologist living in Suwalki, Poland, very close to the border with Belarus. Together with her parents at Midi Centrum, she has transformed the public library located in one of the city's most deprived neighbourhoods into a learning space. A creative centre where children have access to technologies they can't afford. They develop their creativity and their social skills and share the progress with their parents once a week. The library also provides training for the elderly. And thanks to Midi Centrum, Miss Felicia now knows how to use Skype and is in permanent contact with her family living abroad. This whole new concept is now being experimented in the public library on the other side of the border in Grodno. And the two centres have started their exchange programme, allowing children from two countries to get to know each other better. They are about Nida, a Palestinian woman who, before the Ruwa Med project, was a housewife spending most of her time taking care of home duties. Now, together with a group of five women from her village, she is running a small beekeeping business. She was provided with the tools, equipment and hives needed to start honey production. She also took part in training sessions organised by her Spanish partner and shared her experiences with other beneficiaries from Lebanon and Jordan. Nida and the other women are now able to produce 150 kilograms of honey each year despite not knowing anything about bees before. Nida says she is happy because she can reap the results of her hard work. But most of all she has high hopes for the future with plans to develop other products derived from honey like royal jelly creams, soaps and cosmetics.
these are only two of the 1,000 stories we could have told you about. And yes, we have chosen two of the more human ones, because this is actually what makes CBC so unique, because people matter. That's why today, we reunite to celebrate the outstanding achievements of ENPI CBC and welcome full of hope the exciting prospects for the future that ENI CBC brings. <laughs>